Well, I think um, perception is key in, in football a lot of the time. And, of course, I had injuries. And no way am I going to sit back and, and, and say I didn't. I saw a stat a couple of years ago when they, they wrote down myself, R Rooney, Giggs, Scholes, you know, uh, Gerrard, all these players of sort of that generation. Mm. By the time we were all about 22, I'd virtually played double the amount of games in all of them. Yeah, everybody says I'm all. I was always injured. I I played loads when I was when I was younger. Um, so as much as everyone says, oh yeah, he was injured all the time. I still played a heck of a lot of games yeah. in my mm. career. So <laughs> later on in your career, the problem is with with my career, I got injured a, quite a lot late on. I was average later on in my career. So people tend to remember the things that were, you know, more re or closer um, time wise. So. So that's that one. Playing too much, getting injured. I mean, a lot of people, it's a fair question, and I really don't know the answer. Um, I mean, the lads would have, a, have an opinion as well. All I would say is that, yes, you can overplay, I suppose, but in terms of injuries, my dad was a professional footballer for 20-odd years. He had groin problems, he had hamstring problems, he had thigh problems, mm. he had muscle injuries. My brothers are very good footballers, very good athletes. They have terrible trouble with muscle injuries as well it's just in the family it's just genetic it's just you know i was born fast whether that's good or bad yeah. it, i mean it, well, it was kind it of both it pitch, was good and bad, it's it was, bad yeah. from an injury point that's just the way i'm made so i was in my opinion i was always going to be always going to get mm. muscle injuries no matter what but i understand people saying it's because you played a lot that's why you got a lot of muscle injuries but i personally i just think i was made to get muscle injuries because of my speed really let's go back to before injuries did or didn't start to slow you down 1998 and that goal what do you remember from that day because i remember going with you to saint etienne and talking to you about it and you were like yeah yeah kind of it was a big deal ish <laughs> and for me it was massive to stand with you in that stadium point i don't think you could even remember which goal it was you'd scored in. did that not was that not everything to you? You don't look, sort of think back to that day and remember every little thing that was said or what happened? Or... No, not really. I think that's, uh, you know, we spoke earlier about, you know, champions, great players, great teams, things like that. In your career, it's a real, if, you, if you're that way inclined, if you're, you know, want it, if you want to be the best player, the win everything. I mean, I, I picked up the Ballon d'Or here and I just... Get it off the pitch. We're pl about to play Derby. I need to score a goal, and you know, Macca mm. passes the ball. You know, it's just relentless. So you rest on your laurels. You start dreaming. Oh yeah, I played a great game there. I scored a great goal there, and all the rest. You're a dreamer. It's the next game that's important because if you don't score, everyone would have had a go at me. You know, mm. Mike Lowen's off the ball or whatever. So I think the people that are really successful for a long period of time, you can shine your medals when you're finished. You mm. can reminisce and say. I can stand there at the side of the pitch and say, at the end with you and think, oh, yeah, that was pretty cool, actually, doing that at 18. I can do it now, that's fine. <laughs> but at the time, it's what's next? What's next? Where's the next trophy? Where's the next goal? Where's the next performance? And also, we lost that game that night. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. We were all there. Yeah, we lost yeah. the game. You know, so, yeah, it was an incredible goal, of course. It was, but he scored an incredible goal. But his thought process afterwards was like, how disappointed are we to be leaving the World Cup when actually... We should have went through. So you have different mentalities. It's different if you scored that goal and you went on to lift the World yeah. Cup. You probably talk about it for the, every day of your life. But when you lose a game, it's like, right, yeah. as he says, let's let's get home. We need to we need to play again. And I think, Michael, you started that World Cup, didn't you, on the bench? Yeah. And it was a meteoric rise, really. And what he showed, he was such a young player. He just came onto that scene and just yeah. it, it took it by storm, as his career did. I mean... The, the, in terms of your your career, you, did you not tear your hamstring? Did you tear the tendon in your hamstring? You had a horrific injury. Yeah. Was there kind of almost a before and after period where you felt before that? I mean, you were absolutely lightning, weren't you? I mean, I played against you off and off. Did you lose a little bit of that pace then after that, or did you feel yeah. the same again? Or was always a concern that you would oh, it would go on you? Yeah, I mean, once I did it once, I was gone really. I mean, I, I changed my game. You'll you'll know you played against me played with Macca for obviously many years, but I went from being someone that scored goals like I did against Argentina. Express training. Yeah, yeah, beating players, as you say, I was quick, I was running in channels, I was crossing the ball, I was, that was me, that was just, that was how I was. 
the last six, seven years of my career, I just turned into the only thing I could. I was petrified of running and splinting. Get, yeah, of splinting. Oh, I just knew I was going to tear a muscle. So I was. Uh, I might that the worst thing about it all is your instinct says what you've always done all your life. I was bred to be a footballer. Every time he gets the ball there, I know what he's thinking. I know what I'm thinking, and you do it. Worst thing ever is Maka gets the ball, and I, and then I think, oh no, you can't, don't, come off short. Yeah. And it's just... You've lost your wings, haven't oh, you? Oh, you've lost everything. Mm. So all I did at the end of my career for six, seven years, I hated it. I, I couldn't wait to retire for most of my, you know, really? for the back end of my career, because I wasn't me. So all I was doing is coming short, link in play, get in the box and just using my enjoy instinct. It still? Well, I could still score. I had an instinct to where the ball was going to go and I could finish. So I just used to rely... So end, ended up, everyone just used to think, well, Michael Owen's a great goal scorer, but did not really do much else. Mm. You lost that magic and, then? You lost well, that I didn't, I could, cutting I physically, edge? Physically, I couldn't yeah. do it. Mentally, I, you know, mm. I, I could do it, but physically... It's just horrible to still want to do it, oh. but just your body just simply doesn't let you. And you know what's even worse is that I, I explained how it felt when someone like Maka got the ball and my immediate reaction is do this and then split second is no you can't, just go short. The worst thing is you then get into a, a rut whereby you don't even put yourself in a position to be able to run. So you actually then go and stand in areas where you shouldn't even be. You, but I think to myself, if I stand on the last man, Maka will expect me to run yeah, out yeah, yeah. and if I don't, He's going to have a go at me yeah, and say, yeah. why, why are you running? Why are you there, so yeah. then, at the end of my career, I wasn't even standing in those positions. I was going into places where he'd look at me and think, oh, the option of yeah. running's not there now. So do I, you allow I, was thinking think, of get, like, I was thinking of going in wrong positions. I'm it's sitting like, oh. on the bench at Stoke. I'm the guy that scored in that World Cup game for England when I was a teenager. Do you sort of allow your mind to go there or not when you're at that point in your career? Do you just deal with what's in front of you? Listen, I, I admire people that can you know, play for the love of the game. Um, I've got no problems with it that they lose their power, they lose a yard of speed, whatever it might be. And they, they can go down a division or play a lesser team and things like that. But for me, it was turmoil. It, mm. it Did was you think of so walking painful. away though? Mike? Did, what oh, made you carry on? Loads of times. What made me carry on? I was still young. Still young, um, mate, wasn't you? Mm. Didn't want to give yeah. it up. A few million other reasons you might have <laughs> carried no, on I actually football. handed in my notice in many ways. I went to, you know, went to the chairman at Stoke halfway through my time there, realising I'm not gonna I wasn't gonna play and, and to be honest, every right not to play because, you know, we played in a certain way and it didn't really suit me. But so around Christmas I uh, I offered to just, you know, walk away mm. and I was gonna retire there and then but um Did you feel sort of almost embarrassed because people expected a certain thing from Michael Owen and you weren't able to give that to them? Yeah, I mean, yeah, the whole the whole last few years of my career in many ways was a frustration yeah. because, as I've just explained, I couldn't do what I what I used to do for one, and what my brain was telling me go on go and do this and then split second no don't don't because you'll be out another six weeks because you just can't sprint anymore. I think it's an example, isn't it? All these wonderful next generation players that don't take it for granted. Your health, your fitness. One minute it's there, the next minute it's gone. And, I mean, and it should have been so different. I mean, I snapped my hamstring in two playing for Liverpool away at, Ellen, away at Leeds at Ellen Road. Back then, they, they wouldn't do surgery on muscle. They would only do it on tendons and ligaments and things like that. So I basically, to put it, put it very basically, you've got three hamstring muscles in both your legs. One of them totally snapped, and whenever they snap, they reattach there and there. So obviously a, a muscle recoils. Yeah. And then, so I was running on two hamstrings in my right leg and three in my left leg since I was 19 and a half years of age.